All right, before we get started, we're going to face the east. <clears throat> Let's give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Wahaha Kadash. In Hebrew, that would be giving praises to our almighty heavenly father, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Rakah Kadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone for teaching us his truth, honors to the brethren that's laboring doing the work to further the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so, and also peace and blessings to the hopeful we led. The one third of our people that's returning back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai during these final moments <clears throat> so that you have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson to the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And as far as I know, I'm gonna just do continue our read through through the New Testament talk about what it means then and what it means now because everything that we read applies today in a different way in a spiritual way now I believe uh, I was still in Matthew the 26th chapter So I'm gonna pick up where we sort of ended off yesterday, but I'm gonna go back a little bit. So Matthew 26:36, then come up Yahweh Shai with them unto a place called Gathers Man, and he said unto the disciples, "See ye here, while I go yonder and pray." And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. So, Yahweh Shai was sorrowful, and his spirit was heavy on him, because he had already been prophesying and predicted his death. He knew the exact day and the exact night. Now, if anybody else knew the exact night of their death, they would go crazy. That's why we don't know the exact time of our death. You know, because Yah Yahweh Shai is the son of the living God, Yahweh. So he built differently. He can know that kind of stuff and still be normal and follow what the Heavenly Father wanted him to do. Anybody else would break. But he told his disciples, Hey, sit here with me. I'm exceedingly sorrowful. His thoughts are heavy, kind of like having anxiety or a panic attack. So he just wanted his uh, disciples to be with him, to comfort him. You know, and that's what we do even today. Sometimes, I know I talk to my cousin, the brethren. Sometimes, we what, we, uh, what happens to us sometimes? Sometimes we get sorrowful and very heavy, knowing all the stuff that we did in this life, imagining what we did in our past lives. You know, stuff that we still struggle with because we in the flesh. Some brother may struggle with women. Some it may be, um, it may be drinking, it may be smoking. You know, we all got some bad habits that could be cleaned up that we working on. But at least we can recognize it and we self-analyze ourselves every day and fight for improvement. But again, sometimes we could be sorrowful and very heavy. There's not many others we can go to that can understand why we so hard on ourselves. But who can we go to? It can be our brethren. You know, our fellow teachers out here, our fellow disciples that labor with us in the spirit. <clears throat> and that's why he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death, tarry here and watch with me. So we comfort each other by expressing what we're feeling, and then we, we remind each other that we're in a spiritual battle. we fighting unseen forces. While fighting this matrix, this whole system that was set up by Esau, the so-called white man. So not only is it a spiritual battle, it's a physical battle. <clears throat> and then we got to battle our own self. We got to battle the flesh. So we'll remind each other of that. Send scriptures, 
Did we talk about the mercy of the Lord? I was extended to those who returned back to him. So now we eligible for mercy. And then the Lord, the Lord's mercy can be comprehended. It's not the same mercy that we have toward each other. His mercy is on a whole nother level. So something we got to be reminded about, you know, we may down ourselves, hey, um, but the Lord would never forsake us. You know, things that we wouldn't let pass between each other, you know, stuff that we would not forgive, Yahweh Rashim Yahweh Shai going to forgive for his elect. So that's how we comfort one another, just remembering what's really going on and remembering the, uh, the end of the story. Now, back in Second Ezra, what had bought out yesterday, I think it was 14 to 38, because this is a battle. Hey, and sometimes we can get wore out. That's why Book of Revelation chapter 12, I believe, it says he shall wear out the saints. But Second Ezra 14 and 38, dang, hold on. I think it's 14 and 38. Actually, that was the other part. That was about when the Lord said, drink what I give thee. And second Ezra, then he said, you know, he drunk understanding. But uh, let me look for the scripture real quick. Seven and fifty-seven. Second Ezra seven fifty-seven. Forgive me. Second Ezra seven and fifty-seven. <clears throat> then he answered me and said, "This is the condition of the battle." So the condition of a battle is being set up in a physical and a spiritual world and within us that we got to fight against. So again, and then he answered me and said, this is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. So we gonna have to fight. You know, the other nations got to fight, but remember, uh, they have no glory at the end. They got no kingdom. So since it's no happen in the today's story, they really ain't got nothing to fight for. So what we just read applies to the nation of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We got something set before us to fight for. So that's why we, as a people, gonna have the hardest battle. And that's why I think Acts 14 says, through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom was a tribulation. That's a struggle, affliction, that's a fight. We're gonna have things that we fight for to maintain our integrity to get to the kingdom. Then when we continue to second Nezra seven and fifty eight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer, as thou hast said. He gonna suffer judgment and destruction if he is overcome by the world, overcome by the flesh, overcome by the spirit of the so called white man that's extended throughout the earth. Now let's continue. But if he get the victory, if he overcome himself, forsaken himself, forsaken his way, and lean on the Lord, overcome the earth, he shall receive the thing that I say. That's the kingdom of heaven. But going back to Matthew 26, and we're going to start at about 39, uh, just reminding, you know, Yahweh Shai was sorrowful, so he wanted to be with the brethren. And that's why today we comfort each other with the scriptures, um, just reminding what everything is about. As a matter of fact, dang, I need to go to that real quick. Hold on. The scriptures talk about not letting your sins weigh you down. I need to find that real quick. 
it's in second nez was it was just so much in there dang where was it Dang, forgive me one second. Let me look for like 20 more seconds, see if I can find this. I sort of remember where it was at. I wasn't able to get it, but let's continue with the book of Matthew 26. I'm going to look for it tonight. <clears throat> and when he went a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cut pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. So he was asking Heavenly Father if it could not be his fate to have to be put to death in front of many. Now, being put to death is one thing, but now you're being put to death on public display in front of everybody. You know, that's a shameful thing to, to have to go out like that, uh, seeing all the great things that you did. But it's not even about that. It was just really to bring shame to his name. Like, if this man so great ended with this fate, what chance do any of us have? You know, they're trying to make an example out of him. But Yahweh Shai said, not as I will, but as thou will. So that's why we pray um, that we can be preserved from the stuff that's coming. If we can not taste the death. But some of us got to die for the ministry. But if not as we will, as the Lord will. Because the Lord needs somebody to die for the ministry. It was written, so somebody got to fulfill that. And if you got to fulfill that, that take no glory from you, you're just gonna be the first ones on the chariots. But let's continue. And he come up unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? So Peter was asleep. And the Lord asked him, like, what's going on? You can't wait one hour and watch with me. Now the elder apostle, I think a bar did a lesson that none of us have been in this truth for even an hour. Because a thousand years, that's a day to the Lord. So one hour to the Lord, if you take that one, if you take 1,000 years, hold on, one day, if you take 1,000 years and divide it by 24, 24 hours in a day, one day being a thousand years, one hour will come out to about 42 Point five years. Now, Elder Apostle Gabar said that none of us have even been in the truth one hour yet. 
So really, none of us have, have even been on watch with Yahweh Shai for even an hour. That's why the Lord said to Peter, what, could ye not watch with me one hour? So yeah, most people, they can't watch and be with the Lord for even an hour. That's 42 years. Now, Apostle Tahar, you know, I think he, he pushed in about 40 years. So he been in almost an hour. But 42 point some years, that's the hour with the Lord. Many people that came into this truth and done fell out in that hour. Then it came in this truth, and before the 42 years, before that hour been up, they done already fell out. They're not teaching no more. They don't believe. They back in the world. They believe in something else. Now let's read this again. And they come up unto the disciples and find of them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Why that bug me, but <laughs> Man, I hope y'all can hear me. This shit loud, but anyways, this wasn't written to see oh that the disciples of sleep. No, this means that people awaken to this truth, they come into it, and then they fall back to sleep, meaning they fall out of the truth. Just like the disciples, they couldn't stay up for that hour to watch with Yahweh Shai. Many men that came into this, they can't endure one hour, which is about 42 years. So, you know, people, it was real humbling because that puts us all on the same level. Even Elder Apostle Tahar and me that's been in about, I think, three or four, we really on the same level. That really shows that to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, we are babies. You know, Elder Tahar, he be about He'd be about one hour old. Then people like me, some of us, we might be 20 seconds or a couple minutes old. But you know, despite the great differences in our knowledge and the amount of work that the elders did, before the eyes of the Lord, we are little children. We are babies. Ain't none of us even one year old yet. I'm sorry, ain't none of us even one hour old before the eyes of the Lord. Meaning as long as he been in the truth, but for the Lord, he ain't really been in it all that long. So, you know, it's humbling for those that got years in it. But um, but even us that's younger in the truth, that shows that, you know, as we grow in the truth, as we hit five years, seven years, ten years, we not to think too highly of ourselves, which the scripture has also said. Because again, ain't none of us been in the truth for an hour. Ain't nobody been in it for 42 some years. And you got some brothers, once they in it for five, 10 years, 12 years, they get full of pride. They think they better than everybody else. They think they know everything. They think they accomplished something. Yeah, you've been in it for 12, 15 years, but to the Lord, that's not even an hour. So that's why that was written. And that was a, a real good lesson, Elder, I think a bar did. And he come up into the disciples and find them asleep. And he said unto Peter, well, could ye not watch with me one hour? And what's, what's the reason that many of our people can't watch for one hour? What's the main reason that most people can't endure in this truth? You know, for at least 42 years before they fall out. It's the influence of the world, which the world get its influence from the so-called white man. He set up money in front of you. He set up material possession, possessions in front of you. He set up women in front of you, vain glory and pride. And most of our people love that stuff. So that's what they go back following after. That's why the Lord gonna take all this stuff away. It ain't gonna be no money. It ain't, it ain't gonna be no great possessions. The women ain't gonna be beautiful no more. And that's gonna humble our women. Cause it ain't gonna be no showers you can take to smell good. 
to look soft and smooth. Hair ain't gonna be able to be dead. Ain't gonna be no beauty supply stores. Ain't gonna be no nail shops. Ain't gonna be no power. Ain't gonna be no clippers. So guess what? Hair is gonna be growing in places. So now you're not soft and desirable as you was before society collapsed. So all the men that did stuff for these ladies, because ladies will use their looks and their beauty to get what they want, you're not gonna be able to do that once the power go out. So, and ain't gonna be no men coming to y'all rescue because of y'all beauty. And some women, that's their only skill. Using their be using their beauty to uh to seduce a man to get help or to get what they want. So when the power go out, society to been a collapse for a few weeks, that beauty out the window. So who gonna help you? Cause the man that was helping you before was only helping you for your beauty. Meaning it ain't gonna be no help. The man that gonna be thinking about you. They're gonna be thinking about they self, or if not, they're gonna be too scared to come to your rescue. So the only woman that's gonna get helped is women that the Lord have mercy on. And they're gonna get helped by the men of the Lord. Uh, because we're not gonna be after no women for no beauty. We're going to be seeking um, mercy, still giving praise and thanks to Yahweh by seeing Yahweh shine the Holy Spirit, but we're going to be seeking mercy to receive salvation at the end of all this mess. So the stuff that made people fall out this truth, the Lord is going to pull all of that back. Ain't nobody going to have no pride out here when they ain't had no shower in a couple weeks, when they ain't ate in 30 hours. Pride go out the door. It takes energy to have pride. It takes energy to be beautiful. Well, the Lord about to put everybody on a strict diet. Extreme fasting. Hey, and even exercise. We're going to be running for our lives, climbing. You know, tell them what we're going to be doing. But, you know, once all that stuff is gone, people are going to wish they would have never forsaken this truth to go back into the world. Because us that got this truth, we could be held together. Now back to Matthew 26. Again, what? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Verse 41. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we're supposed to watch and pray. And we're supposed to watch anyway watching for the signs of the times, um, measuring the times through the prophecy that's written in the scriptures. And not only that, we watch and pray. Watch the situations that we put ourselves into. Watch the people we around. Watch what's coming to us. Um, that what? That you're not answering to temptation. That's not just temptation of a woman or a temptation of, you know, something simple like that. That's a one-time thing, but really temptation to enter back into the world. Because the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing to do what's right, what's pleasing to the Lord. But the flesh is weak. That's why a lot of times us in the truth, when we go off, when we do something that we know that's not pleasing to the Lord, that's why our spirit be sorrowful and heavy. We know we disappointed the Lord. We know whatever we was facing that we failed at that moment because the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing but everybody else that's not spiritual that's outside of this truth they spirit not willing they don't believe in the spirit they don't believe in the unseen world so they spirit is weak and they flesh is weak that's why there's no, there's no limit to what they can do. Kill you for some chips or get the microchip. You know, um, there's gonna be no standards, uh, no morals out here. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, oh my father, if this cup may not go, hold on, forgive me. If this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. So Yahweh shall pray it again. Could it not be my fate 
to be crucified in front of everybody and tortured and put to shame openly. You know, but the Lord, but the Lord said, if I gotta drink it, then your will will be done. And he came and found them sleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he come up unto his disciples and say to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So that's why sometimes we pray for the same thing over and over again. Lord, please have mercy on me. Lord, please have mercy on me. Please let me make it to see the return of Yahweh Shai, uh, as you will. But if you have other plans, then let that be. Because we know what's ahead. Other people don't. But you see here, Yahweh Shai said the hour is now at hand. Not only did he know the day of his death, he knew the hour of it. And that's the hour of trouble. So Yahweh Shah, he had his own form of Jacob's trouble. We all gonna have our form um, coming soon. Starting with the blackout, the crash of the dollar, the internet going offline nationwide. In the verse 46, he said, rise, let us be gone. Behold, he is at hand, and doth betray me. And so, matter of fact, we're going to read that. Matter of fact, that's Mark 7. I want to, uh, let me grab something else real quick before we continue. All right. So we're doing a read through the New Testament. I'm supposed to be looking beforehand before I come out here, but just let me skim real quick. While he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude with swords and staves, swords and staffs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. So Judas, the, betray the, the betrayer, <clears throat> he came with law enforcement. What's the modern day sword? That's the gun. That's like if today, boy, Yahweh Shai is on the scene. Um, he will be all the men that's bringing you this 100% truth today. That's like, that's some two thirds, they gathered up law enforcement. You know, religious leaders, law enforcement, security guards, armed with handcuffs, batons, and pistols. And they bring this law enforcement just to hunt down one prophet, one man of the Lord. That's what Judas did. So it shows you that they fear Yahweh Shai. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. And that's why, matter of fact, let me go back also to the book of Matthew, the tenth chapter. So he came, who, who did Judas come with? The chief priests and the elders of the people of the nation of Israel. But that's why going to Matthew 10 and 36, it says a man's foes should be they of his own household. So that goes into your family, the people that you live with. Once food start going low, once the microchip is presented to you, but really this goes into the people of your own nation. A man's foe should be they of his own bloodline, of his own nation. Because aside from the Roman Empire, Yahweh Shai's greatest enemy was his own people. Uh, that's who tracked him down and uh, took him. And uh, what's another one? Matthew 24, let's go back a little more. It says, 
Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. What did Yahweh Shai tell his disciples? You should be offended of me because it is night. So we're the ones that's going to be offended. And in that, um, many people are going to betray one another. The two thirds, they're going to be offended too for this word. It's going to be a stumbling block to them. So Matthew 24, 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. So, um, Yahusha was prophesying of his own death even then and the tribulation that will come to us. Now let's continue with Matthew 26. Oh, uh, and that's why I think the book of Mark, it says the brother shall betray the brother to death, meaning the people in your own nation will betray you to bring you to death. That's what's happening to him. That's what's gonna happen to us. That's why we try to stay clear of the two thirds. Now, he that betrayed them gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. So Judas Iscariot said, Whoever I kiss, that's who you snatch up. Now let's continue. And forthwith, he came to Yahweh Shai and said, Hail, Master. And kissed them. And Yahweh Shai sent it to him, friend, wherefore art thou come? Then they came and laid hands on Yahweh Shai and took him. So he kissed Yahweh Shai like he was honoring him, like he was praising him. That's why he kissed him and said, Hail, Master. And then kissed him. Now let's show with uh, <clears throat> Yahweh Shai. Prophesied of that too, right here in Mark the seventh chapter. You know, Mark the seventh, verse six, was talking about other things, but it applies here too. So Mark seven and six. So again, what did Judas the betrayer do? He kissed him and said, "Hail, Master!" Like he was praising Yahweh Shai. But Yahweh Shai said in Matthew seven and six, he answered and said it to them. Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honor of me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So what did Judas do? He honored Yahweh Shai with his lips. He kissed him with his lips, and then with his own lips, he said, Hail Master. But what? The people, the hypocrites, they honor of Yahweh Shai with their lips, but their heart it's far from from him. So, you know, Judas was talking a good game. He kissed the Lord, said, Hell, Master. But his heart was far from Yahweh Shai. Like, even today. You know, people saying, you know, they're going to die for the Lord. They servants. They praise him. They honor him daily. Um, but they still in the world. They're going to still betray him in the end. They're going to say they're going to honor Yahweh Shai. But when they on the chopping block, and they, they being presented with that microchip, right, no. what they gonna do? They gonna, they gonna deny the Lord. <clears throat> and there's gonna be some people that get snatched up. Esau gonna ask them, are you a member of GMS? Are you such and such? Heart of David 144. They gonna ask people about their YouTube names and they gonna say, is this you? And what these betrayers gonna say? No, that's not me. Y'all mistaken. That's somebody else. That's you betraying Yahweh Shai. So again, we're going to read that in Matthew 26, then back to Mark 7. Matthew 26, 48. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, whoever I shall honor, the same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Yahweh Shai, and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Mark 7 and 6. Well have Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honor of me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So in that moment, Judas honored Yahweh Shai, but his heart 
was not with Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shai stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So one of Yahweh Shai's servants took out his sword and cut, you know, one of the man's ears off. Then Yahweh Shai said unto him, Put up again thy sword into its place. So put up your sword. For all day, that take the sword shall perish by the sword. So, <clears throat> so um, when it's time of trouble come, don't pick up no firepower. Don't pick up no guns. Because, forgive me, because those who take the sword shall perish by the sword. <clears throat> You're not following Esau's influence. You know, when uh, Isaac told Esau, and by thy sword shalt thou live. Will you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So even then, when we get snatched up, um, Lord willing, we able to run for it. But those of us who get snatched up, don't pick up no guns. Uh, because not 10 times out of 10, if you endure until the end with this truth, and you've been a faithful, dil diligent servant, and you get snatched up, you being snatched up, to make a testimony against them. Matter of fact, that's also in the book of Luke. Let me just not say that. Let me show it. Yeah, so if you get snatched up in the truth, you get you getting snatched up for a testimony against them. You know, your mission not over yet. Because when well, you pick up a gun, when you're supposed to be making a testimony, they see you pick up a gun, what they gonna do? They gonna open fire on you. Not you can't make your testimony. Because you chose to live, you chose to survive, to preserve yourself by the sword. Now you have to perish by your sword. Now let me hit Luke 21 real quick. All right, so Luke 21. So verse 12, all this happened to Yahweh Shah, and all this is gonna happen to us um, in Jacob's trouble. So Luke 12, 21 and 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. What, the two thirds, Esau, his military police, they gonna lay hands on us and persecute you, meaning torture us, delivering you up to synagogues that would be the courts and the prisons, the FEMA death camps, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So being brought before governors, presidents, the elite bankers, you know, Sloppy Joe, Bill Gates, that dude Charles with the sloppy neck, you gonna be brought before them for the name's sake of Yahweh Shah. Settle with the, <clears throat> let me read that. Settle with therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. So don't practice what you're going to say if you get snatched up. When you get snatched up, don't be rehearsing, practice, practicing, meditating what you're going to say. Let me read that again. Settle with therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So once we snatched up, the Lord going to tell us what we should say, that our enemies can resist it. And Yahweh Shah, the little bit he did say once he got snatched up, his enemies couldn't resist it. So let's continue. So Matthew 26. You want to read 52 again? 
Then said Yahweh Shine to him, Pull up again thy sword into its place. Put up that weapon. Put up that gun. For all they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. Let's continue. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? So y'all sounds like put up that sword. You think I can't pray to my father, and he'll give me more than twelve legions of angels? That's thousands and thousands of angels. Well, when we get snatched up, Yahweh and Michael, that's going to stand up. They're going to send those same 12 legions of angels for his elect. So they wasn't supposed to come for Yahweh but they're going to come for us. And only a handful of other believers that got to die for the truth, you know, they're going to die. But the angels going to be with them. Because when that blade coming down, the angel could make you feel no pain. He could take your soul out your body before it happened. And the blade might be coming down, then the blade just might explode. Now you're free to go. There's no telling what the angel's going to do. But it's a test of faith. Because remember, this is a fight, and this is the condition for the battle. That men, Israelites born upon the earth, must fight. So again, think as thou that I cannot now pray to my father. And he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that this must be? So he said, you think I can't call for twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled? Because it must be fulfilled that he had died for the sins of his people. Then even us, I think what, Revelation Either chapter 9, was it 9 or 6? Let me get that real quick. Because, like I say, the Lord says somebody got to die for the truth, so it must be fulfilled. We all can't make it. We desire to make it, but even if we don't make it, we still made it. And those with understanding would get that. Must, must be Revelation 6. I think 6 and 9. <clears throat> yep, so Revelation 6 and 9, this got to be fulfilled. And that's why we read about Yahweh Shah being snatched up. He told his disciple to put up the sword. He told him, You think I can't call 12 legions of angels? But then how would the word be fulfilled? Showing that the word must be fulfilled and we can't alter it, we can't desire to alter it. That it got to be written. But we know how the rest of the story played out. He got put to death, then resurrected. Same with us. We get put to death. The Lord going to raise us up shortly after. So Revelation 6 verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar. Of the souls of them. That were slain. For the word of Yahweh And the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Which they held. So, uh, John saw the souls of the people that died for the word of Yahweh and the testimony of Yahweh Shah, meaning they died with this truth, they fought to the end. Verse 10, and they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holding in truth, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So, these souls that were slain for their testimony cried out to the Lord, How long? Do you not judge the white man that took our that took our life for this truth? You know the white people that dwell on the earth. Hey, this I you notice know, not talking about no devil, Satan underground, no demons. Because it said, How long do you not avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? The white man that's walking on the earth today. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was sent unto them, that they should rest for a little season. And so once we die for this truth, the battle over. The Lord said, rest. Because what? Just previously in Jacob's trouble, he was tired, out of breath, dirty, thirsty, hungry, sleepy, sore, uh, cramping, aching. But now we're in the spirit world. We ain't got none of those those uh, physical afflictions. So the Lord said, rest for a little season. 
until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Look at that key word fulfilled. So some of our fellow servants and our brethren, they got to be killed also as others. That's in his truth. That it might be fulfilled. So again, and it was sent unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were to be fulfilled. So the Lord got a certain number of our people that's supposed to be killed for this truth. And then the Lord would avenge us on those, the so-called white man that dwell on the earth. So that's, we see that key word was fulfilled. That's why Yahweh Shai said, after he made the comment about the 12 angels, but how then should the scriptures be fulfilled? That this must be, that he must die for this truth for his people. And that we also must die for the word of God and the testimony which we hold. Because that don't nobody in this truth die for this testimony, Yahweh Shai ain't coming back. He gonna come back once that certain number has been reached, that's going to give him the reason to let loose on the so-called white man, zapping him, uh, and all the other horrors that he going to do to him. You know, because, uh, and, and that's just how the Lord going to do it. You know, he going to let him put some of us to death so Yahweh Shai and the holy angels can let loose. Because that they killed them beforehand, before they started killing us, they're going to be like, what did we do? You know, besides all the stuff they did do, they're going to say, we didn't kill none of your anointed. You know, the scriptures say, do my anointed no harm. But they're going to touch the anointed, and Yahweh shot going to go off. And that same Maori house, I said to the multitude, are ye come out as against the thief with swords and staves for to take me? I said daily with you teaching in the temple and ye laid on me and you laid no hand on me. So the same people that Yahweh I was teaching daily in the temple, they came with swords and staffs. Like they was coming against the wanted fugitive. But in the temple, they laid no hand on them. Same today, the same two thirds that we trying to teach, they're gonna be the same ones betraying us, trying to turn us in to the military police, trying to turn us into the FEMA death camp, trying to turn us in to get a cash reward bonus on a microchip to get 30 extra digital dollars. Then Judas Iscariot betrayed Yahweh Shah for was it 30 pieces of silver? He got a cash reward for turning them in. They're going to try to get cash rewards for turning us in. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. What scriptures is he talking about must be fulfilled? Because we in the book of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. So if the Old Testament don't matter, what scriptures must be fulfilled? What prophets must be fulfilled? It's the Old Testament. The whole Old Testament prophesied of Yahweh Shah. So all that got to be fulfilled. For those who say Old Testament don't matter, um, it's done away with, but that's why that word is supposed to be Old Covenant and New Covenant. The books of the prophets, that would be the books of the Old Covenant. But now we in the New Covenant, reading the book of Matthew. So everything that was written, under the old, you know, in the books of the old covenant, that got to be fulfilled, even today. Now let me let me skim through this next part real quick. Matter of fact, let me go back to Luke twenty one.
now, uh, Matthew 26, 57. And they that lay hold on Yahavashai, lay him away. How do you lay hold on somebody? You lay hands on them. That's why we just read in Luke 21. I think was that 12? When Luke said, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues. So they lay hands on him and deliver him up. So who was that? Uh, Pontius Pilate, which is pretty much be the government of the Roman Empire. That's who we're going to be delivered up to, the military police and FEMA. Now, verse 59, now the chief priests and the elders and all the council saw false witness against Yahweh Shai to put him to death. So they lied on him. And you know, that's what, that's, that, what they're doing that today. They're making uh, false witness against us. They say this a cult that we spread in hate, uh, violence. That's what our own people saying, that this is demonic, the work of the devil. Then you got the so-called white man saying what? We becoming more militant, more aggressive. We identity extremists. We are uh, racist. Everybody bearing false witness against us. But they don't bear false witness against these fake Jews, against the KKK. But they not racist. And that we are domestic terrorist group, all kind of stuff. But found none, yeah. Though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. So all the people that could that came to lie on them, um, they couldn't lie on them. All the stuff he said, all the stuff he, he did, that was what? There was no guile found in them. And even us. The Lord said there would be no guile found in us. Now let me look up that scripture real quick. Let me read this. Let me look up this word, God. The truth, the court gate. So, First Peter chapter two. We're gonna read our verse twenty-one. For even hereunto were ye called because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. That's not following his steps just for the good. You can't just follow his steps into the kingdom, but you don't go through the tribulation, but you don't be persecuted. That's following his steps for the bad too. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth for he did no sin neither was no guile found in his mouth in the blue letter it says that word guile means to trick to bait or deceit like your pastors and your preachers they preach out the deceit the lies of their heart but Yahweh Shai was found no guile that's why going back to Matthew 26 and 60 but found none yeah Though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Yeah, they found no God. They found no deceit. They found no trickery in Yahweh Shah. He didn't do nothing wrong. And that's why, just like there, it says, there was found no sin and no God. The Lord said the same thing about us in the book of Revelation. So Revelation 14 to 5. Now this is going to tell the 144,000, the true prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. These are they, I'm sorry, let me read 14 to 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, meaning 
before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we will be blameless. So people bear false witness claiming that we teach hate. We are sexist. Uh, we degrade women. Uh, we lying. Um, we racist, identity extremist. We aggressive, militant. That we deceiving the people. That's God. But what did he say about Yahweh Shai? Who suffered for us? Who was an example that we should follow? Who did no sin and no guile was found in his mouth? What did Yahweh Shai say here in Revelation? Or what did John say here in the book of Revelation 14 and 5? And in their mouth was found no guile. Let's continue. For they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So there is no guile, no bait, no deceit, no trickery in our words, in our actions, in this whole ministry. There is no guile. And what? We are found blameless. We are found without fault before the throne of the Lord. So people can lie on us and claim and uh, say we're guilty of all these different charges and things. But before the throne of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, we are found without fault, no guile in our mouth, meaning no lie, no trickery, no deceit, no hate out of our mouth because we push thus says the Lord. That's why again, Matthew 26 and 60, <clears throat> because just how these false witnesses came to Yahweh side, they're coming to us now. But let's read this. But found none. Yeah, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Meaning they found no God. They found no reason um, to punish them. Because all Yahweh Shah did was talk. That's all we doing. And it's a problem. Because of the words we speak, they speaking all this stuff against us. Because of the words he spoke, they tried to bear false witness against them. But what did it say? Though many false witnesses came, yet they found none. Meaning they found no God. They found to not guilty of anything. That's why the Lord said about us in Revelation 14 and 5. In their mouth was found no God. For they are without fault before the throne of the Lord. Just like Yahweh Shai here. Um... He was without fault. That's why it says, and they found uh, But before the justice systems of the heaven, this, we're going to be found without fault as well. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So somebody did say we found deceit in his words. That's why we just said that all he did was, was talk and teach. And they're trying to hold him guilty by what he said. That's why the two witnesses that came, what did they say? Let's read that again. And the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow have said, that Yahweh Shai said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. So, all the false witnesses that was against him, only thing that they could use against him was his words. But in his words was found no God, except the two witnesses that said, this man said he could destroy the temple and build it in three days. They thought he was talking about the physical temple of Jerusalem, not knowing that he was talking about the spiritual temple the living body, which is a vessel for the Holy Spirit. That's the temple he was talking about. So even then, there was still no God. They just lacked understanding. <clears throat> and the high priest arose and said it to him. So who's the high priest? It's an Israelite. So all the Israelites trying to testify against them. And the high priest arose and said it to him. Answer is thou nothing. What is it which these witness against thee? So y'all, so yeah, y'all say you're not gonna say nothing about this temple 
that you're going to destroy and, and build within three days, Yahweh Shai held his peace. He didn't say nothing. And the high priest ans answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. So previously, Yahweh Shai said nothing. But now the priest said, We tell us. If you be the Hamashiach, the son of God, the priest demanded that Yahweh Shai tell him. Yahweh Shai sent it to him. Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you. So Yahweh Shai said, thou hast said, meaning you said it. There go your answer. Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the son of man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So Yahweh Shai said, nevertheless, after that, you're going to see me sitting on the right hand of Yahweh and see me coming in the clouds of heaven. What did we just read in Luke 21? Let's go back to that before we finish. And it shall turn to you Okay, so before all things, they should lay their hands on you, persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogues and to the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Yahweh was brought before kings and rulers. The, the high priests, the scribes of Israel, brought before uh, Pilate, uh, the Roman emperor, governor, whatever you want to call it. And it, sh and it shall turn to you for a testimony against them. So, Yahshua is brought up for a testimony. Before he was put to death, he's supposed to finish testifying. And then, he, what did it say? Luke 21 and 14. Said it were therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. That's why when they asked him about destroying the temple and rebuilding it, in verse 63, Yahweh Shai held his peace, meaning he didn't say anything. He wasn't trying to get himself out of the situation. He wasn't trying to dominate the conversation. Because what? Going to Luke 21 and 15, it says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. And if you are to speak, Yahweh going to put the spirit on you to speak. And he's going to tell you what to say. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. So we're going to read this again. And said, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of Yahweh and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto Yahweh Shai, Answer thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses have against thee? Yahweh Shai held his peace. The Heavenly Father did not give him the spirit nor give him a mouth to answer that question. That question is supposed to be remain unanswered until they see him risen again. Then they will understand. But Yahweh Shai held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be Christ, or Mashiach, the Son of God. So saying, I demand that you tell us if you're the Son of God. And then what Yahweh Shai say? At that moment, Yahweh Shai was given mouth, he was given the mouth and wisdom to speak against his adversaries that they could not resist, meaning they couldn't deny the words that he said. So I, I adjure by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be Hamashiach, the son of God. Yahweh Shai answered and said it to him, Thou hast said. Meaning you answered it. You said it yourself. Your words is the answer. But nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall, shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. Meaning I'm going to go back up to the Most High God. And coming, returning to earth in the clouds of heaven. Now people will read the clouds of heaven. I think it's talking about the clouds of the earth. The clouds of heaven is not talking about the clouds here on the earth. The clouds of heaven 
would be the chariots, the vehicles of the heavens. That's why Psalms 104 and 3, part of that verse reads, who make up the clouds his chariot. So when we see this word cloud, we we'll place it with chariot and know that that means vehicle, which those vehicles would be the so-called UFOs that we pray and wait for to be delivered on. All right, but that's it for this lesson here. We're going to pick it back up then tomorrow where we left off at. Just really going through the New Testament and breaking it down because that's the most screwed up part of the Bible. Now to close out, we're going to hit Isaiah 55 and 6. Then we're going to go to the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha. So Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The Lord says, seek him. You seek him in his book. No other books. And this is a commandment. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So you're supposed to call upon the Lord while he is near. How do you call upon him? Well, praise uh, using his real name. And then, not only that, you call upon the men that he set up. We like the hotline for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the Lord said to seek him. So people that put this truth off, they put off reading, they put off watching videos, they put off using the men that the Lord set up here in the earth to gain understanding, you transgress the law. Because the Lord said seek him, and you didn't seek him. So you broke that commandment. But that's why right here in the book of Tobit, uh, chapter 12. Hold on. I think it's 10. Uh, Tobit, chapter 12, verse 10. But they that sin, the Lord says, seek him. You got all these different ways to seek him. You don't seek him, you sin it. So 12 bit, 12 and 10, but they that sin are enemies to their own life. So if you sin, you threaten your own life. If you don't seek the Lord, you threaten your own life. So again, but they that sin, not seeking the Lord, amongst many other things, they that sin are enemies to their own life. So our mom has said something that, you don't seek the Lord, you're not hurting nobody but yourself. That's what Tobit 12 and 10 say. If you don't seek the Lord, if you sin, um, you, you uh, dang, I don't want to mess it up. The scripture said it's so cold. That if you sin, you enemies to your own life. Let me read this again. Now I'm in Ezra. Yeah, but they that sin are enemies to their own life. So you're not hurting nobody but yourself if you don't make no sign for the Lord. <clears throat> but that's it for this lesson here. Till next time, Shalom.